Hi everybody, welcome to Paul Programs, your spot for learning about game mechanics and game design. Today, we're going to be talking about game flow. Alright, before we get started, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell if you want to be notified when more videos like this drop. So, now let's dive in. Alright, so you may be wondering, What's game flow? Well, put simply, game flow is the way your game kind of flows through the different states it goes through, um, be it from when you first start the game and you get the main menu all the way to when you're actually playing the game to when you complete a level or complete the whole game or get a game over. The different states are basically handled in your game flow. And a good example of seeing how this actually works is Magic the Gathering. So. Let's take a quick look at how Magic the Gathering handles game flow. When talking about game flow, think of games like Magic the Gathering here, where a game begins where players shuffle their deck and they'll draw their initial hand of cards. From there, it'll be decided which player goes first and based on whose turn it is, there'll be an order. So in Magic the Gathering, usually you'll have a phase where you either summon creatures, place land, and then from there, you'd have the ability to decide if you want to attack or not. And then it moves to the other player's turn, as you saw here. And when the other player takes their turn, they can decide if they want to do any of the same things with whatever cards they have in their hand or deck. And then this kind of pattern and flow keeps repeating until you get to a point where basically all one player has taken the life points of another player. So this is just a simple example of some game flow at work in Magic the Gathering, but it can be handled differently in all sorts of games. Other card games like Pokemon handle it very differently than Magic. So it's just something to consider when you're actually designing your games. That was one quick example of basically how a game can incorporate game flow. And there's plenty of other examples out there like Monopoly or even role-playing games like Persona. But what we want to do now is think about how we can actually design a game and incorporate game flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and design a racing game. So let's get started. So now to explain and show how we can actually design game flow, let's actually design game flow for a racing game. And in this case, the goal is basically going to be to design our start to finish flow for when an actual player takes part in a race. So as we know, the goal of racing games is to basically loop or go around a track a certain amount of times or basically laps is what it'll be known as. From there a player will usually select their car, add any modifications, tweaks, or updates for it to basically run as they want to. And this is basically the pre-race set of the game where players will choose their car. Then we'll actually end up in the race itself. And there's basically two parts or two things that go on in an actual race game flow. One is that it's going to put the cars in a specific order based on standings or some other determination that is basically created for the game. Um, in most cases, though, it's usually based on standings of some kind. After that, then the race actually begins and the cars will loop around the track as many number of times to hit the basically set number of laps um, for them to complete for the race to be considered done. And the goal is for the race to be finished once all the cars have completed their laps. And then once all the cars have completed their laps, based on the order that each racer will finish uh, lapping the course or track, then it would be decided what the placements are. And after the placements are decided, you as a designer may want to actually have like some kind of trophy or award ceremony based on either this race or several races and how the standings work out at the end of all of those. This is just some of the things to take into consideration when designing game flow for a racing game. Alright, 
So with that, we've now designed our racing game. But how would we handle each of these different states in code itself? Well, that's a good question. And we actually have a great tool for handling different states in coding called an enumerator. So let's take a quick example of how we can actually build an enumerator and what its purpose is in code for your game. All right, so now jumping into some code, let's look how we can build different game states for something like a racing game. And this will be more around like the race component of the game, handling the different flow that goes into that. So here we have our enum with the basic type that we're trying to set. Um, this enum keyword will allow you to actually create your enumerator and the different states. This is basically the representation of the different states. So when you're calling something, you'll call this and then dot whatever state it's actually in. And our first state would be select car. And in terms of design perspective, you think of this as the point where a player basically knows what they want to do. They've already selected their track and now they have to select their car, maybe pick different options to put on their car, so on and so forth. Then we'd have our next state, which is the pre-race. This is handling all the more technical stuff like loading in the level for the racetrack, loading in the different components, setting all the different racers, putting uh, the player in their position based on maybe other standings or just randomly. After that, we have the actual race. And this will be the point where all the core gameplay occurs, racing across the track, all the laps, things like that, until the race is considered complete. And then once the race is complete, you may have a post-race state. And this may be something like displaying the different standings, um, basically maybe having a trophy ceremony if the circuit's been completed and you've basically come in first place because you've done so well in your race. It's basically to handle anything that occurs after the race is done. And this is just a very simple look at how you can build racing game states, but you can even build upon this and add things like select your tracks, um, different menus. If it's multiplayer, you may have other states you may want there for every player to select their racer or car and things like that. Um, is it a simulation game or is it more of a kart game like Mario Kart? Again, this is just to help you get started, but hopefully this helps you understand how flow can be handled in code. All right, so this was a very streamlined approach to how we can create different states and handle them in an enumerator for our game. But in a real game, you'll have more complexities, different sub-states that you have to take into consideration, and things like that. But with that said, hopefully you were able to learn just a little bit about how you can handle and manage and build around game flow. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, just like below. And I will catch you all next time.